Good afternoon, dear iSight student members and faculty advisors. Welcome to our fourth iSight webinar series. Today, you will find your Saturdays with informative and substantial updates on the latest and emerging topics in ICT and research. Thank you for rising up to the challenge of this new academic landscape. Today, we have an interesting webinar on engaging in a community-based capstone project. This webinar highlights developing real software projects addressing the needs of the chosen community. It prepares students and audiences for their professional careers as system analysts and or project managers through civic engagement and leadership. By the way, I am Dr. Barmilo Villanueva Abante, the Dean of the Graduate School in IT at World City Colleges, and at the same time, iSight Board and your host for this webinar. Before we continue, let me remind you of our privacy policy. By participating in our iSight webinar series, you consent us to capture, record, and process data shared directly and indirectly on these events. Ensure the smooth flow of our webinar, please be guided by the following. This session will be recorded for documentation purposes. For best user experience, use Google Chrome browser for desktop and Zoom app for mobile. Only the speaker's microphone and video camera shall be turned on. For those in the Zoom account, use our chat box for your questions. And those in FB Live, please type your question in the comment section. It will be read later by yours truly during the Q&A. At the end of this webinar, we hope that our faculty and students attendees could apply the knowledge and concepts they gain in the webinar in the engaging in a community-based capstone project. To our dear participants, at the end of the webinar, a link to the evaluation of feedback form will be posted and you must fill them out to receive your e-certificate. Please write your name correctly. Thank you. Moving on, to give his opening remarks, may we hear it from one of the handsome board of eyesight and the PSight National Officers, Dr. Neil P. Balba, from the Lyceum of the Philippines, Laguna. Good afternoon to all of you. Welcome to iSight. We are so happy that you are here again. And uh, we're so happy that uh, you're always part of us in uh, sharing the success when it comes to information technology. Rest assured that iSight will be providing you a lot of seminars and trainings to enhance your knowledge when it comes to information technology. We're so blessed that this organization is not only for the Philippines, it's not only for Region 4, it's not only for Southern Tagalog Region, it is for international and for the entire country. We are awarded by ABET. ABET is one of the prestigious organizations evaluating and granting quality to different organizations. Being one of the awardees this 2020 for innovation and for technology, this is an honor for us, not only here, not only in Region 4, not only in Southern Tagalog, but for the entire country, that we, an, uh, a simple organization, provides a great impact to the entire world. Rest assured that we, the board members, of the eyesight will be going to continue to support and help you to guide you for your future by sharing by uh, by means of giving you training seminars conferences and i hope that you you will be participating every time we do have this kind of activities if you have any question don't hesitate to ask your advisors your teachers your teachers are always are also part of us. They are the ones to help you. And if you have any problem with regards to 
of concerns about information technology, the organization is always here to assist you. We would like to thank everyone for being always there, including our beloved supervisor, Sir Lepel Guetta. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for the support that you're always giving us. Thank you very much to our dear director, Dr. Amelia Viglete. You're always there to support eyesight. We promise that eyesight will be giving you everything that we can do and we can give. Hangat my technology, andito kami. Just try to remember, we are being developed not only for technology, but to share the technology that we, we will learn to other people. And we will be the foundation of the entire nation. Just learn to listen, learn to adopt, learn the technology. But don't forget, technology is nothing without the enhancement of our attitude. Technology is nothing without the enhancement of our character. Technology is nothing without giving, without looking at the top. The God is there to support us. God is there to guide us. With this kind of pandemic, we're still here. With this kind of pandemic, we survive. With this kind of pandemic, we stand. Eyesight will be there for you to be the eye, to be the guide and the eye for your future. With this, I would like to say thank you very much to all of you, and we hope that you will be coming over with, if we have our conference, if we have our uh, activities like this, and rest assured again that we will be your guiding angel forever and ever. Thank you very much again, on behalf of eyesight. Thank you very much to all of you. Mabuhay. God bless you more. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Neil Balba. It is indeed our honor and pride that we are given full support by our CHED Region 4A Supervisor and Advisor of eyesight. To inspire us this afternoon, may I call on camera for his inspirational message. The handsome, no other than Engineer Lupel B. Guetta. Please give him a virtual clap. Faculty, students, eyesight officers headed by Dr. Rosalie Alday. Good afternoon. The year 2020 was a very challenging period for CHED, the HEIs, faculty, and the students due to the effects of the eruption of the Al volcano and uh, on the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, which has brought unprecedented disruption on the operation of HEIs in Region 4. In this period of pandemic, the higher education sector is forced to have a shift in education paradigm. There is no other choice but to make the necessary adjustment in the delivery modalities to continue the teaching and learning process. Up to this time, face-to-face -face classes in all levels of education are suspended. The use of alternative delivery of educational services has become an option. In today's version of the PSITE webinar series, Dr. Alice Lacorte will present to us engaging in a community-based software project, a software project known as Buckwheat Finder. This is an institutional output that is instrumental in locating the evacuees during that al volcano eruption and even in this COVID-19 pandemic. And if this is maintained properly, improved as the need arises, this will be usable in any kind of pandemic. 
My dear friends in the academy, we need more type or kind of this software project. It may not bring us new discoveries or new technologies, but the usability of this to the immediate needs of the community in the height of distress makes this project laudable. Also, in launching this kind of project, it helps fake the first Asia Institute of Technology and Humanities in satisfying one of the trifocal function as higher education institution, the extension function. Though we are all aware that most of the HEIs in the country, not only in Calabarzon, majority of HEIs focuses mainly on instruction. To the students present in this webinar and to the faculty handling thesis and capstone advisorial function, think of thesis or capstone such as this that will serve the community, especially in the trying times. On behalf of the Chad Regional Office 4, our hardworking Regional Director, Dr. Amelia A. Biglete, and to all of its personnel, I welcome you all to this free webinar by iSight. Thank you and keep safe always. Thank you, Sir Lupel, for your untiring support to iSight. The highlight of this afternoon's webinar is our fourth thought on the topic entitled Engaging in a Community-Based Capstone Project, and I will now introduce our speaker. Our speaker is currently the Dean of the College of Computing and Information Technology at First Asia Institute of Technology and Humanities, Tanawan City, Batangas. She finished her comprehensive training as Data Privacy Officer from PSIT National in obtain her certification from the said organization. As a researcher, her works focus on green computing, information system, unmanned aerial vehicles, transportation management system, and community-based capstone projects. She has already produced publications on international journals, and some of her research papers can be searched on Google Scholar. She is the lead theme member of Bakwit Finder app, the app awarded by provincial government of Batangas during the Taal volcano eruption. Currently, she is a member of CHED Regional Quality Assessment Team member or ARQUAT in Region 4A, Pakokowa Accreditor, National Board Officer of Philippine Society of Information Technology Educators, and Regional Board Officers of iSight or Integrated Southern Tagalog of Information Technology Education, a recipient of ABIT Innovation Award for 2020 in Baltimore, USA. She obtained her Doctor in Information Technology with distinctions at Technological Institute of the Philippines, Manila, and Master of Science in Computer Science at Batangas State University. Let us all welcome the ever beautiful, sexy, and intelligent speaker, no other than Dr. Alice Lacorte. Please give her a virtual applause. Go ahead, Dr. Lacorte. Thank you, Doc Mello. Can you hear me? Yes, madam, yes. Thank yes. you. Thank you so much, Doc Mello, for that very, very wonderful introduction <clears throat> all right so good afternoon everyone good afternoon to our dear student members and faculty advisors my sharing this afternoon is a little bit of a theory and more of an experience the concept of what is learned inside the classroom was being applied in the real environment. So I hope uh, you will be able to listen to me for one hour and maybe 10 minutes 
because later on when you're really into uh, doing uh, softwares for the community and for some of the courses you enrolled, you will be experiencing some, maybe some of the uh, things we have experienced. Actually, there are many topics I have in mind that I would like to share with all of the student uh, members that we have. But I, I then suddenly bumped up into a topic that is really worth remembering a year ago. And it is the birth of the Buckwheat Finder application that we made. So, um, the webinar highlights the challenges and fulfillment in developing real software projects, addressing basically the needs of the chosen community. So it will supplement the knowledge of student listeners on their professional careers as future system analysts or project managers through initializing or igniting with them the trait or characteristics of how they will be engaged at the onset in the society and how they will be able to build leadership while they are still in college or while they are still studying. For the outline of my presentation, I will review some of the important terms and major roles of uh, in system development, followed by the birth of Buckwheat Finder from the pains, the problems that we have identified to ideation, to team formation, and to basically the all uh, the, the, the concept that we all know, systems development life cycle, that theory, the development of Buckwheat Finder. I would also would like to share what are our challenges when we're developing such kind of software project. Because uh, this is basically about community and we will be dealing with people in the community. And what are our lessons learned that perhaps you can use when you are in, in, in when you are going to deal with this kind of project. And most especially, what's the impact of this Buckwheat Finder to us, to our team, and to the community as well. So please sit back and relax and enjoy by sharing with you. So let's get the ball rolling. So first, I know some of you have a little bit of an idea what a community-based software project is. When you Google this term, you will find that it's actually a software development task or activity of groups of individuals, basically developers, who belong to a certain community or group. So let's say, for example, there's a community of Python developers, and they would like to work on a certain project using Python. Uh, basically, they termed it community. That's the community that, we're, that, that they are referring to, the community of Python developers. And then they do develop software projects. But in my talk, I will be referring to a software that addresses the needs of the local community or it is a software project with social significance or of importance to the community or the society. I've read a research paper about this, which basically stated that the project that the authors and, and, and his students utilized allows the students to apply the theories and principles of software engineering on a real life scenario while keeping them engaged and motivated, addresses the needs of a community and society, and better prepares the students for their professional career through improved academic achievement, enhanced self-reliance, and community engagement. So that's why I would like to share our experience, the experiences of our students to most of our students' listener today so that they will be able to be more to become more motivated and more engaged in doing an alternative software project that they might be able to propose sa kanilang thesis and capstone project as what was mentioned by Sir Lopel in his inspirational message. I would agree on these thoughts that students once engaged in real software projects while in school they tend to make them more motivated because they find that 
what they are doing will be valuable, useful, and beneficial to the people and to the community. So um, let me share with you uh, this term. Speaking of community or society, we all know that one of the trifold functions, as what was mentioned by Sir Lupel, of the school or university is community extension. This means that we should all be involved in outreach programs of our department or of our school, and that falls under civic engagement. Civic engagement involves working to make a difference in the civic life of one's community and developing the combination of your knowledge, skills, values, and motivation to make that difference. I know for sure that all your schools, that your schools have conducted many, many activities which involves you as a volunteer doing beneficial activities in your school's adapted community. And that is very, very good for you as the student of that particular HEI. Another thing, if you will remember, one of the areas of accreditation for those who are into accreditation, the social orientation and community involvement. So you will see that as a student, the school is trying, you know, the school is doing its best for you to develop this kind of characteristics or attitude towards the community. So meaning as students and faculty and even the non-teaching personnel of the school, we are all encouraged by our school to participate and promote such extension programs for the community. So I thought, why not include the development of community-based software systems as part of our school civic engagement? Because that's our expertise as IT, uh, future IT professionals or those students in the field of IT education. Engaging in projects with social significance ignites the desire of an individual to contribute to the community. So when students continue to be involved on such community projects, he or she will be aware of his value to the community. His works will be appreciated. So what is our school's ultimate goal now? Most of them will answer to produce professionals who will become leaders in their respective fields and in our case in IT education. And that is what we want our students to be. Sometimes you also include this term leadership in the core values of our school. But what is this, what leadership is all about? So leadership captures the essentials of being able and prepared to inspire others. It is a trait beyond merely managing a certain project, managing a certain business, but us, a teacher, I would like to see my students lead other people or other students, especially in our field. Then how will our students become leaders? So that's why as early as now, we teach them what a leader should be. And this is the comparison between leadership and management. So they are sometimes tend to be used interchangeably, but basically they are not the same. So on the slides, you will see that leadership is distinct from management. So let us take a look at number two. A leader inspires followers. But if you are a manager, you may or may not inspire those under you. So uh, a leader emphasizes innovation. Take a look at number three while managers emphasizes rationality and control because a manager has to operate within a chain of command. So he has to get the approval of a higher person than him. But leaders are not. They operate independently. Sooner or later, we want you all to become leaders. So in summary, leadership, requires traits that extend beyond management duties. So both of them have to manage resources at their disposal, but true leadership requires more. So why did I mention this two terms, leadership and management? Because these are the necessary skills you need to possess if you want to perform a higher role in software development. This is where your favorite system an analysis uh, course and a, a role that maybe in the future you will have 
a system analyst. So having said that, in dealing with software development, one very familial, familiar role, aside from programmers and designers, of course, the system analyst. The analyst systematically assesses how users interact with technology and how businesses function by examining the input and processing of data and then outputting the information with the intention or with the goal of what? Improving the processes involved. Wala, ginatin gusto mag-improve, mag-improve. So that's what system analysts should do. An analyst is responsible for analyzing, designing, implementing systems to, fu to fulfill organizational needs. And yun, in, in our subject, the systems analysis and design, we are training you on the future job roles that you may take when you graduate from the program. So that is just a very, very brief overview of what a system analyst is. As an analyst, and if you want to become one, um, your primary or chief task is to define the problem and outline the solution. You're a problem solver. Aside from that, you develop alternative solutions, the challenge is the solution should be consistent with the objectives or strategy of the company. You use as tools, you employ techniques and methodologies to build the final solution to the problem. And you are capable of applying models, procedures, design necessary to produce the outcome. Another role central in, in software development is a project manager. Sooner or later, hopefully many of you will become project managers. So your responsibility as a project manager is to oversee the successful initiation, planning, design, execution, monitoring, controlling, and closure of the whole project. Take note of the word successful, meaning as a project manager, you should make sure that you are able to control risk and minimize uncertainty. The, the, the problems that might occur as you develop, as you manage the project that you have at hand. So uh, are there overlapping roles between system analyst and project manager or are they the same? My answer is it depends, <laughs> okay? So on this slide, is the comparison of the responsibilities as people leading the team. So project manager serves as the overseer and the point person for specific projects or endeavors. Project managers meet with the clients, company leaders, they talk, they communicate to gain insight so that you can get information that you will be needing, needing before you start planning or before you begin with the project. They assist in developing a plan, my plano, my budget. You identify the necessary resources. There's a timeline. Analysts, on the other hand, build structures and in, it is in the form of information systems. The analysts um, step in for a company to make them more efficient, their processes more efficient by implementing and updating their computer systems. So that is what analyst is doing. Now that I have given you some recap, this is just some recap of the concepts we have in systems analysis or even project management, um, comparison of management and leadership, important terms and roles in software development. I will now share with you how we applied those concepts in our real community-based software project. This is where we will explore now Buckwheat Finder. And I hope for some of you, you will get uh, some uh, insights. If you're doing right now a certain software development project, maybe you can get some, some insights on how you will uh, continue developing the project or how you will improve the project. But before I continue discussing what's all about Buckwheat Finder, I would like to share with you a video.
Doc Alice, please repeat the video. No sound. Hi, Bam. Yes, Bam. No Wala sound. Po. Sounds. No sound. Okay, Dr. wait. Uh, okay, po. I'll wait. I'll stop my sharing, po. I think meron akong hindi na click. Share yes, screen. Yes, the share sound. Sorry, po. <laughs> there, there. PowerPoint slide. Ulitin ko lang po. Find evacuation. Ma'am, okay na? Faith College's officials yes, were yes. Thank you. interrupted. The first thing that came to their mind, how to help the school community. But that idea has grown into a bigger purpose. Why not include oh, all affected families? With the help of technology, Bakwit Finder was born. The app has two main features. Search. Find evacuate. Sorry. And then, pag nag-click mo yung search button, uh, ang mag-a-appear is the name of the person and kung saan siyang evacuation center. And the other, search for evacuation center. This Amun is very also important for those na mga <coughs> nag-donate ng mga goods po nila. The biggest challenge developers say is to collect as many data as possible. When we went to the provincial disaster uh, PDRRMO office, <laughs> No one had data. This would mean a lot of leg work. We joined them in getting data from the Tanawan City Office. They're fortunate that the local government through the Social Welfare Department is willing to share data. Faith Colleges will also be launching a feature where families staying outside evacuation centers can register. In Tanawan alone, more than 15,000 people are living outside the city. They have only traced 8,000 people so far. It will help a lot kasi malalaman namin through this application pwede silang mag-sign in doon and then malulukit na namin sa ang area sila nandoon but work becomes harder when local governments are not receptive to the idea or would give them raw data that's not in digital form it's really a team effort here in faith colleges where inside their multimedia laboratory where volunteers are patiently encoding the data of the evacuees displaced by the Taal volcano eruption. And today, they're trying to cover 12,000 names of the evacuees. And the job becomes more challenging because some of the entries were handwritten. So they really need to make sure that the data are accurate. That's why the school is calling for more volunteers. They can either gather data for us, encode, uh, monitor, uh, li be liaison officers between us and the LGUs and until the provincial um, government office. One of those behind the app is at all victim herself. Actually, mas gusto ko pong tumulong. Uh, gusto ko maring mamigay ng, uh, mamigay ng relief goods. Pero mas focus nung College of Computing and IT yung uh, ma-develop yung system para sa ganitong uh, sakuna. So that yung collection of records is centralized then. The app doesn't end in a Taal volcano eruption. It's not only going to be for Batangas, but it's going to be a national tool because whether we like it or not, we are a disaster-prone country because of our location. Developers appeal to users for their patience as the app is a work in progress. They plan to add in the future inventory of goods and cash donations. You can view the app using your mobile phone for Android or just go to the website at bakwitfinder.bangonbatangas.ph. In Tanawan City, Anjo Alimario, CNN Philippines. All right. Can you hear me ulit po? Are you still there? Yes, Doc. Yes, Doc. Thanks, Doc Melo. Can I get a thumbs up naman po sa ating mga ano? mga student uh, listeners. Ayan. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. So, uh, to continue, so, Bakwit Finder app is a mobile app that is used to locate the, the whereabouts of the evacuees during the Al Volcano eruption. It has the following features, as mentioned. Search for an evacuee and search for an evacuation center. In addition, it has a Google API to see the location of the evacuation centers. And when you hover your mouse over the map, you will be able to see the details of the evacuation centers. Now, how did it start? Ed? So these are the phases on screen we applied to develop Buckwheat Finder. Basically, it's still SDLC, Systems Development Lifecycle, we applied. But I would like to explain that it is not 
in a not so theoretical way. So first, we identify the gaps or pain points. And second, we brainstorm the idea that's laid down on the table. And then third, we build or we form our team. And lastly, we develop the solution we have in mind. All right. So uh, Buckwheat Finder started when the president of the school called a meeting for our emergency response team. It's during the Taal volcano eruption last January 2020, January 12th. He would like to know who are the employees affected by the eruption. He tasked the team to do the databasing of uh, affected employees. And I was, a, I was assigned to be part of that team. So I thought, what are we going to do to contact them, uh, to actually contact all the, the people who are affected? So curiosity sparked, the desire to help is there, but we don't know how. So the, the question that came into my mind during that time is, what will be our starting point? Where, where are we going to start? And to cut the story short, the pain of databasing the affected employees of the eruption was the identified gaps that we have. That's database, the, the, the employees who had been affected by the eruption. What I did, I posted it in the group chat of our department's, facu uh, department's uh, faculty members, whom are also affected by the Taal eruption. And of course, they do responded and the, the, so, many, so many ideas already flourished. And we started our brainstorming session. As future system analysts, you have to do that with your team. Brainstorming, focus group discussions, the methods on how you will be able to gain many ideas on what to do is very, very important. An anal a systems analyst services is called because there is a solution, meaning there is a problem. There is a condition. So there is a pain, a customer, or an organization would like to address. And we have to identify that. We have to know what's going on, what's happening, what are the problems, what are the situation. So uh, after that, we, we propose an idea, we share it to the right people. <clears throat> and then the next one is <clears throat> the modeling. So after modeling the ideas and the team agreed upon, uh, this is where we formally assign members of the Buckwheat Finder team. We assign each of them a responsibility. At the onset, we only identified members who will just be designers, programmers, uh, data gatherers, which is very important, and of course, encoders. Right after data gathering, we saw that they are all manually written, so we need encoders. As we progress in the development, we identified more roles that we need in the team. So we have identified people who will be data cleaners. We call it data cleaners. And who will be callers. We put up a, a small call, uh, a call center-like space in the, in, in the school. So as analysts in the future, you have to know how you're going to form your team. You need to identify the skills of each member, uh, each member of your team has, and place them to where they will contribute and be more productive. Little by little, we are seeing light from the idea of just databasing the affected employees of faith. It widens its scope of why not include all the affected people in Batangas. Since then, since many of those people, their relatives are looking for them, and we, we thought they have the same concern as like, just like our president. So as an analyst, ito yung mga nakuha namin, na mga concepts, you have the responsibility naman to determine the scope of the project. From only faith employees, now we will go to the whole Batangas province. So I know for some of you, you will recall the term scope creep. It's, it, as an analyst, you should have the, the skills on how you will be able to control the coming in of all the requirements being fed to you by your client. So it's very, very important that you know how to control, when to say no, when to say yes, when it comes to the requirements that they would like the team to do. 
we decided to just focus on two major functionalities of Buckwheat Finder. It will just search for an evacuee and it will just search for an evacuation center. That's for the meantime during that time. So as an analyst, so, but when the faith community learned about what we're doing in the department, those with networks from NGOs and LGUs, they, they, they connect us with them. So we were, be, we were able to, to work with other stakeholders, not only our team. So we work with the College of Allied Health Services of our school, the nursing people. They assisted us in gathering of data because most of the people we talk to in the LGUs are uh, from the city or municipal health offices. So we don't have any connection on those particular sectors or offices. So there were also inputs from NGOs, non-government organizations, who are telling us, uh, why not include this information? Why don't you have this kind of information uh, in, in the, the, the website or in the mobile app that you have? As an analyst, it is important that you know who are your stakeholders, that you know each and every essential inputs that you can get so that you can use it in developing your system. So in that case, we know the local government units inputs and the non-government organizations inputs are very, very essential because NGOs are working with people who would like to donate uh, goods or relief goods to all evacu to some evacuation centers. So we need the information coming from them. We identified our minimum viable product. What will our system? What features will our system have? Now we proceed in the development. Um, funding is another important factor. Funding. So that we can push for the development of the system, we need money because we need to buy the domain. We need to have money so that we can go to the different evacuation centers every day to get information. So since we were doing that voluntarily, we don't, we haven't planned for the funding that we will be needing and its allocation. Because many people knew that the project is very viable and useful. Luckily, you know what, our domain, the, host, uh, the, the hosting site where we can put, put in the, 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 the app or the system, the website, were given free to us by Zoom hosting. Our expenses for data gathering were supported, of course, by Faith when they hear about what we're doing. And there are lots of volunteers coming in to Faith just to be encoders of the system. So that is what we have experienced. So there were risks identified when we're doing the development. There were risks identified. May mga uh, na nakita kami na mga potential problems. One is exposing the personal and sensitive information of the people, those that uh, the data that we got manually from LGUs. And to be honest, uh, in the evacuation center, there, there's no, I know, there's no consent, yet, consent yet during that time. So maybe because safety is the highest priority during that time. So, however, we consider that in the development of Buckwheat Finder, we consulted experts in Data Privacy Act law. I would like to mention his name, Dr. Len Segan. I asked his, I, 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 has it, I asked for his advice. What are we going to do? Uh, as well as our data privacy officer, Dr. Raymond Baisa, sent an email to the National Privacy Commissioner Commission for advice because we really don't know what to do. Some LGUs are not really fully giving their information to us because it's really sensitive. So you know what? We were answered by Commissioner Liboro himself when we emailed National Privacy Commission. And that was very, very overwhelming experience for the team because during the time we don't mind what he is explaining in his letter about data privacy what we all knew is that 
he replied. So para siyang artista sa amin, Dr. Le- uh, Commissioner Leboro himself replied to us and telling us what to what to do. So tuwang-tuwa kami during that time. So it's part of the development of of the system, no? Part of the experiences that we have. And and in the future when you will become one, maybe hindi kayo mag-start really a system analyst, but when you're part of the development team, you will be acting like somehow nag-iisip ka rin. You really analyze, no? If not, the position is fully given to you as analyst. But as part of the team, you really have to contribute and uh, give valuable inputs to the team. So that's very, very important. You will see some mga pictures ko sa slide. Those are the models na ginawa ko so that I can communicate well and clearly to my team what are we going to do we started hindi ko na siya na drawing sa mga drawing up because the need for the urgency is there we need to to use the app immediately because there are a lot of people uh, needing the services of that uh, that software project so talagang sulat kamay you will see a yellow paper what are Anong mga fields na ilalagay namin? So, ganyan na siya ginagawa namin during that time. So, some of the screenshots of the plants, we do have admin also, no? So that we can we can manage the data that we cleaned and uploaded in the database. Some screenshots of Buckwheat Finder 1.0 and the supposed to be additional feature that was mentioned by CNN, but it was delayed due to the Data Privacy Act concerns. So the registration form. As analysts, guys, it is important that you will have the knowledge on identifying other aspects related or contribute contributory contributory yan, to software development such as the the other stakeholders that might be involved in the development though not part of your team aspects such as legal like that of the data privacy act environmental if your system is into environment health concerns ethics and even cultural so dapat meron tayong knowledge no when we when we do develop such systems and later on you will be able to attain it maaacquire niyo yon as you go along and finish your your IT program sa inyong respective institutions all right now that buckwheat finder is 1 year old already what's next for buckwheat finder as what was mentioned by sir lupel uh, please do expect that Buckwheat Finder will be more mature. The reason why we will be releasing version 2.0 with more significant features like monitoring of donations, more detailed evacuation centers profile, registration of barangay residents, and most likely it will not be used for Taal eruption again, but basically the other uh disasters that might or calamities that might that we might experience in the near future hopefully not so hopefully there's the birth of buckwheat finder nagawasha because of a disaster we don't want to have a disaster so it's okay that buckwheat finder is just there so yeah so that's the news about buckwheat finder these are the challenges, no? And maybe for some of you who are now working also with community aligned software projects. One, it's very hard to get the data because uh, to actually encode the data, because it's manually provided to us, manually written. So and inconsistent yung format sa paggather ng data. Merong may ganitong classing field or may ganitong classing uh, uh, record or uh, information na kinukuha, pero yung iba wala. So, very, it's very hard for us to actually encode all, uh, encode and analyze the data that we are getting from the LGU. Well, dealing with LGUs is another thing. Um, um, we all know that it's quite difficult, quite hard to deal with local government units the people some of the people there because maybe of the nature talaga of its organizational structure we cannot hindi naman natin sila 
mabiblame for that because of its bureaucratic nature. So they will ask you to go from one head to another just to solicit approval of what you want to do. So really, patience is a virtue when you deal with a lot of your stakeholders. Third, time is the essence for the team. The system is of urgent need, so the team needs to work as fast as we could, but we're only reporting to school from eight to five. So after that, we also need to rest. Fourth, we have limited people to do such urgent system. And some of our members of the team are also affected by the disturbance. So it's really very hard to, to update all the records. That's why we have delay in updating of records. So lastly, we are getting personal information and of course, Data Privacy Act is a major challenge to us. So seeking consent from LGUs and DSWD is very hard. So talagang challenge, ch those are really the challenges that we have experienced. Overall, despite those challenges, we managed to launch and give birth to our Pride Buckwheat Finder. You know what? We've met many media personalities, Howie Severino and, so, and his wife, Attorney Ipat, uh, C CNN reporters, GMA News, TV reporters, of course, Wow Batangas people. And we had been so proud of Buckwheat Finder despite, you know what, the, the, the functionality, the features of Buckwheat Finder so simple. Search. Search lang yung ginagawa niya. The simpleness in terms of complexi complexity, yung mga ginagawa nating si system as compared to Buckwheat Finder. Buckwheat Finder is very, very simple. But its usefulness during that time cannot be underestimated. So that's what we were very proud of sa Buckwheat Finder. Um, okay, so... Please do allow me to share more. Wag muna kayong matulog. Uh, I will share more, uh, maybe three more of our community-based projects. Madaling-madali na lang po ito. Anong oras na? Okay, five out. Madaling-madali na lang po ito. So another sharing with you is the other project we started in the same year. It's not only Buckwheat Finder that was born, but ayaw ngayong mag-ano nito. Kalang po. Doc Melo. Yes pa. Yan, okay pa po ako, naririnig pa. Yan, mabilis na po ito, but pan watch or pandemic watch also has begun during that time. Yan, it's about uh, a digital contact tracing app which allow users to actually record uh, the following. PPE, ginawa namin PPE ang tawag. So the persons contacted with, the places or establishment visited, and the events attended for fast and easy contact tracing. What's the story behind this? That's basically the features of uh, Pan Watch or Pandemic Watch. Kapag register, we have QR codes. You can share your QR codes. You record yung tao mo na nakausap more than 15 minutes. You go to the mall, you record uh, uh, kung, kung saan ka pumunta. And then, tinatanong yung mga merong bang minimum health protocols doon. It's part of the recording. And also, uh, um, it has a reminder feature where in every two hours, pag nakalimutan mo i-record, ay nakausap ko pala si Dr. Melo. But after, after an hour, hindi mo siya na-record. So the app will remind you to record that. However, so those are the features. However, it was not officially launched because we were not able to have it published on Google Play Store because there is a need for us to have an agreement with the health organizations or government organizations. So basically, when, when your app pala deals with COVID-19 and health-related protocol, uh, there should be an agreement uh, that you have to upload in Google Play Store. That's my experience. That's, uh, that is our experience. So that they will be able to publish your app. So, but... Panwatch is still alive. You can access it at panwatch.net and we're still planning and hopefully launch it. Uh, but we have to do some alterations on the existing features to make it more applicable now. Nahuli na siya sa amin. Well, this one I want to share the Taal Volcano Island Conservancy Program. If you will see on the picture, yan na yung hitsura ng Taal after a year. This was the visit we had last December 5, 2020 and I was part of the Taal Volcano Science Expedition. 
So it's all about awakening our motivation, uh, the motivation of the academic institution in studying the volcano we own, which is the Taal Volcano. Mga taga Batangas, atin po ay Taal. And somehow, uh, I personally do not know Taal Volcano, some of its information. It's da biodiversity, mga halaman, uh, ibod, at mga puno na nandiyan. But you know what? You will learn that during our expedition last uh, December December 5, ang gagaling ng mga scientists who are with us. So I, I felt so shameful uh, na as Batanggenia, I don't have much knowledge about our own vulcan. So at first, I'm really hesitant. What will an IT professional do with the Al Volcano? But then I realized as IT professional, we can do a lot. Wherever we are placed with, we can do many things to contribute to the community. So I joined the first science expedition. If you will notice, the, the, the news was uh, featured in Rappler. And we were being joined by the UP and UST scientists uh, during that time. So it looks like sa akin, I'm part of the expedition going to Mars. Kasi it's my first time also to mingle with the real scientists, yung talagang sa biology, sa mga, enviro, uh, mga sciences. So uh, I want to share with you how Taal is right now. What's the condition of Taal? Those are some of the photos I've taken and some of the photos na kinuha ko ay galing din sa iba. So as I'm talking here just take a look at the picture so that's now taal scientists have listed at least 30 species of plants on the taal volcano that's the taal volcano island which is sabi nila it's a good condition that the island is recovering given that the volcano is just erupted 11 months ago and of the 30 species na nating ng plants na nakita nila nine of them are native in Taal. So talagang doon lumaki sa Taal. And they were generally impressed about how the biodiversity was able to, to move after 11 months, no? yung post-eruption. So they do not like to miss the opportunity to document everything that they have seen in the Taal Volcano Island. So there is also a team in charge of the ecological recovery, yung mga soil, tinitingnan nila and they want to to analyze the soil kasi they want to analyze ano yung klase ng mga soil na lumabas sa vulkan. So yon gusto nilang uh, aralin. And uh, that's the crater now. You will see kung paano na form yung para siyang sa desert. Yan yung yung lupa ng Taal after 11 or 12 months. And there are also team who's studying about the fishes uh, invertebrates at vertebrates. Yan, yung mga ganda ng inaaral nila. So, Faith and my team would not also would like, would not like to miss the opportunity of coming up with another beneficial community-based software project. Baka our buckwheat finder will become bingwheat finder now. So we don't know yet. So we're just taking our baby steps on opening our heart and mind to this kind of research now that we would like to deal with. So for now, my team will be working on producing materials. Ano yung nakita ng mga scientists during their visit? And we want to share it with the, the community at large. Okay, and then that's Taal. Ayan, ito na po ang last ko. Ayan. Where are we now? Another community uh, project namin. We're involved in the weather station that's located at First Asia Institute. Uh, we, we partnered with UP civil engineers. They're working on their project eSmart. And the project aims to analyze how the materials are being transported to Manila Bay through wind and rain. So the UP team have installed the weather station at FAITH for gathering of data. In our case, this is our opportunity, another opportunity for our CSIT students to have real data, which can be used in their data modeling courses. So we're working on this. That's how we install the, the weather station. Okay, what's the impact? Why am I encouraging all of you? 
to focus more. This is an alternative. Hindi ko sinabi po na gawa, ang gagawin nyo lang ay community-based. Uh, to focus more on community-based software projects. So aside from improvement, which is the main goal, why, we're, why we are computerizing the processes is to improve. So yan talaga eh. Uh, another huge impact of community-based software project is uh, the feeling of satisfaction or fulfillment. It's a very, very big impact ng community-based software project. And this is our team's ultimate goal. The thought that you have created a value in the community by developing systems that are beneficial to many people is already a reward in our professional career and personally. So the fact that your team's work is appreciated by many people, it's really priceless. Recognition follows. As team lead of Buckwheat Finder, it's very fulfilling that it was recognized by Batangas Provincial Tourism Council as we are their partners, partner during the Taal Volcano eruption. So lessons learned. Um, okay. Let me see, mom. Let me check lang. Oh, oh no. Hi, mom. Hello. Sir, Thank sir, you let's... very much. Dr. Sir, Ay, wait. Dr. Sir, wait. Oh. Wait, wait a minute. Okay, Ayan. no problem. Go ahead. <laughs> wait, take exit <laughs> lang po. Wait, 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 wait. Not yet finished. Just give me four, five to ten minutes more. Okay po, ito na. May mga questions ba, sir? Hindi ko ma... Uh, 100 plus? <laughs> Teka lang, sir. Mabilis lang, lessons learned. Um, do not look too far because you will see nothing. So, ito sa akin, there are a lot of opportunities. Students, uh, wherein you can be more involved. And so your software development skills will be enhanced. Just you don't have to go far. Just look around you, and just open your eyes wide. Um, get out of your comfort zones. Wag lang puro IT people, but we can deal with other people who are in the other fields like health, education, business, sports, and many more. So we have to get out of our comfort zones because IT professionals are needed in all sectors. So you can get topics for your capstone and thesis dyan sa mga areas na yan. Teamwork and collaboration is very necessary. So you learn to mingle with other people. No, accept your differences. Nagkakaaway-away sa team but you have to understand each other's weaknesses. There will be conflicts but you have to manage it well. Challenges are ahead. So it will always be there. You cannot avoid it but try to minimize it. And um, do not give up when your system... Uh, does not work properly and no one would like to agree on your crazy idea you have to try and try uh, when you fail you have to try again at the end your final state will always be the success state okay um, are you up everyone are you up for the challenge of coming up or developing a software community-based software project so please watch this. I will add in two to three slides na lang po. Last video. I will have just last two more slides po. Talk Melo, nagpe-play ba ito? Yan, o, ngayon pa lang, ngayon pa lang. Alert level 4 sa Bulkang Taal. The Al Volcano's sudden eruption caught thousands of residents by surprise.
is confirming that a 38-year-old female Chinese patient is positive for the novel coronavirus arrived in the Philippines from Wuhan, China. 41,830 na ang total confirmed COVID-19 cases sa bansa. Pursuant to my power as president, I am placing the entire mainland of Luzon under quarantine. quarantine. was born. The app has two main features. Search for a person. It's really a team effort here in Faith Colleges where inside a multimedia laboratory where volunteers are patiently encoding the data of the evacuees displacement at the Al Volcano eruption. All right, my last two slides, a reminder for everyone listening that to be fulfilled in what we are doing as soon to be IT professionals, do systems or software that will spark change because small actions can make a difference. Mark, make a mark in the community, make a dent, whether it be a small community or a community, a large community. And tell everyone good stories you have. I know your all your schools have many, many good stories that need to be heard by many people so that you may inspire and motivate them to do the same. And lastly, that's why I played that video. There will always be disasters coming, coming uh, in the next coming years. No? All we have to do is to find our purpose professionally and even personally. So I think uh, and how you will be able to find your purpose, you have to engage more in a community-based software projects. I think that's it. That's the end of my presentation. I hope I have inspired and motivated all our listeners to do community-based software projects. Mom, before I end, Doc, okay, I'll stop my sharing. Some of my team, Buckwheat Finder team, are also here with us right now. They inv I invited them to listen to me. So I don't know if they can still open their camera, but would like to thank you guys for making Buckwheat Finder and more to come, more community-based software projects to come. Thank you very much and thank you for listening. Doc oh, Melo. Thank you very much, Madam Beautiful Alice Lacorte. Thank you Sorry. very much. Uh, yes, well said. Uh, it's too... Uh, uh, we are so lucky to be an IT professional because 
as you can see here, we could able to uh, to share our expertise with our community, not only with our community, but in any field of specialization. Yes. We could able to share our expertise with different uh, expert uh, field, as I mentioned. Now, Dr. Alice, uh, we have 1,000 questions now. <laughs> <laughs> Isa lang po, sasagutin ko. <laughs> okay, the first question actually is, uh, the community-based project is for free of charge? Siyempre, the yan, number one, natanong lagi yan eh. Sir, the development? Yes, actually, no, actually, you will not be able to develop a certain project without fund, sir. Eh. Really, funding is very necessary. But hindi ganun kalaki compared to other to other ano po other software projects kasi nga minsan may nagdo-donate minsan nililibre na yung kanilang uh, professional fee but funding sir is important pa rin, even if it's a community based project okay. thank you madam ali somebody are also asking about uh, how reliable is your application the reliability of the application yeah. actually sir Dalawa pa lang ang features niya to search for uh, yung Bakwit Finder, search for Evacui and uh, Evacuation Center. I think yun talaga, we vouch na it's really reliable. Kaya lang, um, inistop po namin yung Bakwit Finder. It's because hindi na nga siya kailangan. But nagkameron po kami ng issue sa uh, Data Privacy Act. So we tend to stop uh, putting it live again, yung Buckwheat Finder. But reliability, since Coco on teaser ang kanyang functionality, uh, it's reliable. Yung functionality lang, sir, to search for Evacui and Evacuation Center. Okay. How about, do it offer a cross-platform, madam? In a cross-platform, it, it can cater open source or? Buckwheat Finder, sir? Yep. No. No pa yung Buckwheat Finder. So, Hindi pa po siya. Yes, sir. Wala pa rin kami for iOS ng Bakit uh, Finder. So, for Android po muna. Uh, and okay. the other applications that we're doing, yung Panwatch also, is uh, for Android po muna. Uh, may, uh, some of the advice are asking, madam, is your uh, team open for collaboration when it comes to this kind of project? Yes, sir. Hindi pa namin na release ang Panwatch. We just have the idea. Meron na kaming mga uh, features na sa Panwatch yung pinakita ko kanina. But uh, uh, gusto namin, sir, i-modify yun kasi there are some features na baka hindi na maging applicable. We are open for collaboration. We don't have funding yet for Panwatch. <laughs> Okay, uh, another question from uh, our, uh, of course, participants. In engaging in a community-based software project, is there a need for community needs assessment? Sir, yes, definitely. Kailangan po ang community needs assessment. Kasi from there, you will find the pains ng community. Pag in mo sila, makikita mo anong sitwasyon nila, what are the things that they need. In our case sa Buckwheat Finder, hindi namin na nagawa kasi ibinigay na sa amin, ito yung kailangan nila. So hindi na kami nakapag-community needs assessment. But if you will be dealing with community-based projects, software projects, kailangan po ng community-based assessment then. Very important po yun. That's the first step that you have to do first, no? Okay, thank you very much. Madam, uh, last question. If somebody <laughs> yeah, if somebody are really wanted to be a uh, part of your uh, project, sino daw po yung i-approach nila and how? What will be the process? And so? Sir, meron talaga yan. Baka ikaw nagtanong yan. <laughs> Hindi pa. <laughs> Sa akin po, sir, I have my email. Uh, amlacorte at firstasia.edu.ph We are very open po for collaboration sa Pandemic Watch. Uh, Bakwit Finder, kasi hindi lang naman pang Batangas, pwedeng gamitin national, nationwide. Taal Volcano, we're very open for collaboration po. And also sa Weather Station po. So pwede po kaming makatulong. So we're okay, open. I think that's it. Thank you very much, Madam Lacorte. Thank you. Sir, thank you. Thank you also. Thank you for listening po. And congratulations, madam. Thank you po.
Thank you, dear participants, for your queries, and thank you, Dr. Lacorte. In order for you to receive your e-certificate, kindly answer our evaluation form which is posted in our chat box and comment section. Your e-certificate will then be sent to you upon filing out our feedback form. Please note that for security purposes, this evaluation link will only be available for an hour after this series. Only members who submitted the evaluation form will be given the certificate. So if you are not yet a member, membership fee is only 50 pesos for this academic year. Kindly coordinate with your respective handsome and beautiful faculty advisors. Before we end this session, we would like to recognize the valuable inputs of our speaker by awarding our e-certificate. Let me read the citations first. Integrated Southern Tagalog Association of Information Technology Education, a recipient of ABET Innovation Award 2020. Certificate of Appreciation is awarded to Dr. Alice Lacorte, Faith Tanawan, for having been the resource speaker in the fourth eyesight webinar with the topic engaging in a community-based capstone project in January 16, 2021, given the 16th day of January 2021 by a Zoom. Sign our Nanay, Dr. Rosalie B. Alday, President Eyesight. Please receive our virtual applause. We would like to invite you once again in our fifth webinar series which is on January 23, 2021 at 4 p.m. with a very handsome speaker, no other than yours truly, Dr. Marmi Lobri Abante, with his topic on data privacy awareness for students. Once again, Thank you everyone. See you again remotely in the next series. Stay safe and have a good day everyone. Godspeed. Okay. Eyesight is an organization for IT Hello. May I request everyone for the photo off? Please uh, open your camera. Please, uh, all participants, kindly open your camera for a photo off. Thank you. Hello, good afternoon. Yes, I, will be the one, I will be uh -huh. the one to take the picture. So we'll be having two screens. So get ready, everyone. So one, two, three. Wait lang po, ipopost ko. Nandali lang po. Wait lang po. So get ready, everyone. One, two, three. Wait lang po at hindi agad mag-open. Next screen. Hindi ko lang po alam kung sino makakasama dito ha. Okay, one, two, three again. Hindi pa po naka-open yung iba. Should I wait? Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Done. Thank you so much. So, we will be playing a video for Eyesight Award. And good luck. And thank you for all for attending. Yes. Thank you very much. See you next week, everyone. Thank you, Paul.
Thank you. Thank you. Formed by the deans from eight different universities in Region 4A, Calabarzon, Philippines, to boost the IT skills of students from more than 200 universities, offering IT education programs such as computer science, information technology, information systems, and computer engineering. iSight is the only recognized organization by the Commission on Higher Education in the field of IT education in the region. Its event is always a much awaited one since all those speakers are coming from relevant industries in the field and well-known academicians in the country. In order to address the need for knowledge of students from the very fast-changing technology, iSight conducted two to three conferences and seminars in a year, and the annual iSight Regional Research Conference and Presentation, IT Education, IRR Site, and IT Competitions endorsed by the Philippine Commission on Higher Education. As such, iSight was able to achieve its objectives in a matter of five years after its foundation. Most importantly, not only the students benefited, but also the universities and schools in the region. The program helped a lot of schools and students in terms of providing them with the latest seminars and trainings in various emerging topics in ITE. They have been exposed to people in the industry for networking and linkages and even IT skill certifications. Students as well as faculty member advisors able to see the latest gadgets and devices, such as drones and robots in advance when they participate in every event. They were able to learn about the research outputs of various school student participants. Faculty members were able to interact and share best practices with each other. Aside from fun, excitement, and prizes, students' outstanding skills in programming, creativity, and research presentations were recognized and showcased. Above all, sharing and collaborations have been developed and self-confidence of students were proven to assist them in their future career after graduation. As there is a need to further supplement learning of many students in a third world country like the Philippines, especially that the field of IT is a fast-changing technology, IT Students Capacity Building Program was implemented to address the need. Most schools and universities in the regional part of the country need to have state-of-the-art facilities and laboratories at par to at least our neighboring Asian countries. Schools offering information technology education ITE programs are striving to keep its curriculum up to date, facilities upgraded and learning support resources provided to all its students. However, not all schools and universities in the region can provide the needed learning resources to students as well as linkages to relevant industries of the programs. Hence, iSight, Integrated Southern Tagalog Information Technology Education, developed this program. To date, there are more than 2,000 student members and 80 higher educational institutions as institutional members in the region. This program provided industry-aligned and timely seminars, trainings, and conferences to students taking ITE programs in the region, addressing the needs of universities as well as the needs of many school, small schools in the region. Big schools and universities and those of higher level of accreditation, local and international, and Center of Development and Excellence in IT Education are extending their resources and facilities to help other schools through the program. In addition, it also promotes a research sharing and collaborations by allowing students to present their theses and capstone as research outputs to other students from various universities for utilization and potential commercialization. Also, the seminars and trainings provided by experts in the industry develop the IT skills of the students that equip them to compete in several programming and IT skills competition in the regional and national levels.
Thank you, dear participants, for your queries, and thank you, Dr. Lacorte. In order for you to receive your e-certificate, kindly answer our evaluation form which is posted in our chat box and comment section. Your e-certificate will then be sent to you upon filing out our feedback form. Please note that for security purposes, this evaluation link will only be available for an hour after this series. Only members who submitted the evaluation form will be given the certificate. So if you are not yet a member, membership fee is only 50 pesos for this academic year. Kindly coordinate with your respective handsome and beautiful faculty advisors. Before we end this session, we would like to recognize the valuable inputs of our speaker by awarding our e-certificate. Let me read the citations. First, Integrated Southern Tagalog Association of Information Technology Education, a recipient of ABET Innovation Award 2020. Certificate of Appreciation is awarded to Dr. Alice Lacorte, Faith Tanawan, for having been the resource speaker in the fourth EyeSight webinar with the topic Engaging in a Community-Based Capstone Project in January 16, 2021, given the 16th day of January 2021 by a Zoom. Sign our nanay, Dr. Rosalie B. Alday, President EyeSight. Please receive our virtual Plus. We would like to invite you once again in our fifth webinar series, which is on January 23, 2021, at 4 p.m. with a very handsome speaker, no other than yours truly, Dr. Marmilobri Abante, with his topic on data privacy awareness for students. Once again, Thank you everyone. See you again remotely in the next series. Stay safe and have a good day everyone. Godspeed. EyeSight is an organization for IT students formed by the deans from eight different universities in Region 4A, Calabarzon, Philippines to boost the IT skills of students from more than 200 universities offering IT education programs such as computer science, information technology, information systems, and computer engineering. EyeSight is the only recognized organization by the Commission on Higher Education in the field of IT education in the region. Its event is always a much awaited one since all those speakers are coming from relevant industries in the field and well-known academicians in the country. In order to address the need for knowledge of students from the very fast-changing technology, EyeSight conducted two to three conferences and seminars in a year and the annual EyeSight Regional Research Conference and Presentation, IT Education, IRR Site, and IT Competitions endorsed by the Philippine Commission on Higher Education. As such, EyeSight was able to achieve its objectives in a matter of five years after its foundation. Most importantly, not only the students benefited, but also the universities and schools in the region. The program helped a lot of schools and students in terms of providing them with the latest seminars and trainings in various emerging topics in ITE. They have been exposed to people in the industry for networking and linkages and even IT skills certifications. Students as well as faculty member advisors were able to see the latest gadgets and devices such as drones and robots in advance when they participate in every event. They were able to learn about the research outputs of various school student participants. Faculty members were able to interact and share best practices with each other. Aside from fun, excitement, and prizes, students' outstanding skills in programming, creativity, and research presentations were recognized and showcased. Above all, sharing and collaborations have been developed, and self-confidence of students were proven to assist them in their future career after graduation. As there is a need to further supplement learning of many students in a third world country like the Philippines, especially that the field of IT is a fast-changing technology, IT Students Capacity Building Program was implemented to address the need. Most schools and universities in the regional part of the country need to have state-of-the-art facilities and laboratories at par to at least our neighboring Ashan countries. 
Schools offering information technology education, ITE programs, are striving to keep its curriculum up to date, facilities upgraded, and learning support resources provided to all its students. However, not all schools and universities in the region can provide the needed learning resources to students as well as linkages to relevant industries of the programs. Hence, iSight, Integrated Southern Tagalog Information Technology Education, developed this program. To date, there are more than 2,000 student members in 80 higher educational institutions as institutional members in the region. This program provided industry-aligned and timely seminars, trainings, and conferences to students taking ITE programs in the region, addressing the needs of universities as well as the needs of many school, small schools in the region. Big schools and universities, and those of higher level of accreditation, local and international, and Center of Development and Excellence in IT Education, are extending their resources and facilities to help other schools through the program. In addition, it also promotes a research sharing and collaborations by allowing students to present their theses and capstone as research outputs to other students from various universities for utilization and potential commercialization. Also, the seminars and trainings provided by experts in the industry develop the IT skills of the students that equip them to compete in several programming and IT skills competition in the regional and national levels.